welcome to The Career Studio, a USU career services podcast that helps you navigate your career path. Thanks for joining us for part two of our Meet the Team mini series of the USU Career Studio podcast. I'm Marissa Armistead, your host, and I am so excited to have our listeners get to know our team just a little bit better, learn about the people who are making the magic happen. So today, our spotlight is on John Folger. So John, welcome. Thank you for having me. You're not a new voice to the show, but it's fun to have you on the reverse side. (laughs) It's nice to be on this side, yes. So John, my first question to you. True or false, were you recruited to help with the podcast solely because of your amazing radio voice? That is what I am told is the reason that I was recruited. I personally don't think I have an amazing radio voice. I think I have an incredibly annoying voice. And I don't know why when I was first told that I was going to be the Tuesday tip person, because originally that was not the plan. I was very shocked because I was like, my voice is not great to listen to. Oh my gosh. But that is what I've been told that it is because of how I sound. That they're like, hey, let's just have him do the Tuesday stuff. Well, this is great because my follow-up question was going to be, can you stand your own voice? Because it is such a struggle to go back and listen to episodes. It's like, wow, I am obnoxious. So that's a struggle for me. So I was curious if that was the same for you. <laughs> yes. After the first Tuesday tip episode came out, I was on a family vacation and I let it slip that I was doing this podcast and my entire family was there. They're like, we're listening to it right now. And after about like 15 seconds of the episode, like it was just the intro. And I was like, hey, we, we cannot listen to this. Like, it, it goes on for like three minutes, guys. Let's stop. Let's it's really long. It. Like, yeah, I'm super nasally and weird. Oh my gosh. That's hilarious. No, I I think that's common. I feel like I've talked to other people about it too. And they're just like, yeah, I just don't. So it's fine. It's totally fine. Fine. (laughs) Well, so to follow up with that question, now we have to talk about your worst recording flop. We all have them. So I'm so curious, are there any particular shining moments where you really, really biffed it? Yes, it was. Oh, I don't even remember the exact recording and I wish I could because it was hilarious. It was probably my fifth or sixth try doing this. And I just explained this to you, but I'll explain it to the listeners as well. (laughs) I don't save any of my flops. I just straight up delete them. They are gone from the universe because I don't want anyone to hear them. And so I just delete them. So what you hear is like the best I can do. And it's not even that great. (laughs) But one of my flops, it was like a two or three minute episode. This was like the sixth or seventh time I was recording it. I was feeling good. It was flowing. And I got about halfway and my brain completely shut off. And I started just talking kind of like this. And I tried to save it. And it was just unsavable. It was my seventh take. And I was just, I was mad. And I was like, come on. So I just redid it. And I think I just talked really, really slowly because I kept stumbling over my words was the issue. So if you go back and listen to one where it sounds like I'm talking like really slow, that was the one that I had to do eight times because I couldn't do it any other way. Oh my gosh. Love it. Love it. And I could share uh, a million and 10 stories that equally match that probably. But I love that. I realized I kind of jumped into things. So backing up a little little bit, just to introduce John formally, he is the famous voice and brain behind the Tuesday tips. So every Tuesday, it's John's voice. If you're familiar with our show, you've probably heard him and know him well, but that's kind of the role he plays for the podcast. But I'd love to learn and and have the listeners learn just a little bit more about you as a person, John. So talk to us about schooling, where you're at, major career trajectory. What are you up to? So to just give my classic background, starting way back when, I'm originally from Pocatello, Idaho. I grew up in Pocatello, technically Trubbick. People know about that. My family owns a skating rink. So from the age of about eight years old, I worked at a skating rink at least once a week. I never had a Saturday off in my childhood. Saturdays of just relaxing were never a thing because we were at work at a skating rink. And then I went to Utah State. Once I graduated from high school, went to a year, then I served an LDS mission to the Marshall Islands, came back from the Marshall Islands, convinced that I was going to go to med school, took a semester of pre-med classes and was like, this is the worst semester of my life. I hate everything. I'm not doing pre-med. And so I just continued doing a psychology degree, graduated from psychology with my bachelor's in psychology. And it was, and I feel this is slightly important for the listeners, but it was in my last semester of psychology as a bachelor's degree that I was like, I don't want to do this. I thought I wanted to be a counselor and I was completely wrong. So I graduated from college 
college with no plan, with no prospects, had no idea. I had a degree in psychology, but I didn't want to do that. And through taking the Focus 2, through career services, and just kind of some self-exploration, what I do, I found out that doing academic or career advising at a university would be good. So I talked to some academic advisors in the psychology department because they were awesome. They got me through my school like super fast, super helpful. I said, how do I get to do what you're doing? Uh, They recommended the Masters of School Counseling Program from Utah State, which is what I've been doing for the last two years. I'm supposed to graduate in December with my Masters of Education in School Counseling. It was originally I was just going to do academic advising, but having worked at career services for the last year doing career advising for exploratory students, fell in love with it. So if I can do career or even academic advising at a university, that is the goal. That's the dream. So that's a little bit too much information about me. (laughs) No, that's great. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing, John. It's so fun to get to know you beyond our work conversation. So it's so fun to learn a little bit more. We're just about out of time. But John, I did want to just add a personal note. You are the first person I roped into for this project. And you have been a strong supporter of the podcast vision from day one. So I just want to let you know how much I appreciate your hard work on the Tuesday tips. Our content brainstorm sessions are truly one of the favorite parts of my job. Definitely a highlight of this project. So thank you for being such an awesome part of the team. Thank you for a season of laughs, outrageous ideas, and so much fun. Thank you for getting me into this. It was an unexpected and I was very stressed when I first was told that I was, as you put it, getting roped in, but it has been one of the best parts of this job. The last four or five months have been some of the busiest and best four or five months because I've been able to do this and expand my horizon. It's been good. Thank you. You're really the driving force. So thank you. (laughs) Thanks, John. Thanks for joining us here at the Career Studio today. Please join us next week as we continue to discuss this month's theme of spreading good cheer by being a volunteer. 